Hello, everybody. My name is Michelle Youngman, and I am with Christian Music Broadcasters. Welcome to this very special Women of Radio Zoom webinar. We are glad that you guys are here joining us today. Um, it's, you know, we hope that you um, receive tons of encouragement, especially in light of CMB, uh, a lot of all of our current events, because CMB is here to do that, hopefully for you. Um, if you don't know this yet, I want to make sure you know, Momentum is coming up very soon, and we hope that we get to see you there. So this, um, our time together on these webinars are just a little bit of a sneak peek in what you get at Momentum. Um, start planning now for our big Women in Radio party. It is Tuesday, May 31st from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So as you start booking your um, travel, make note that we really want you to join us um, for this big event where we're all together being able to encourage one another. We are um, so glad that you're here today. We thank you for following us on our Women in Radio um, Instagram page and, and being a part of what we do. Um, it's uh, on, our, on our call today, it's an active chat. So make sure that you share who you are, what station, what town you're from, and then also make sure that you pick for like everybody to see and not just the panelists, because we want everybody to know um, what you have to say. We have um, discussions that happen um, consistently on our Women in Radio forum. And if you're not on our forum, we invite you to join us there. You can find out how to register for this um, at cmbonline.org. There's a place for forums on there. We've also got our CMB Facebook page. We also have prayer opportunities for you. So lots, um, lots of things hopefully to support you in your role as a woman in radio. But this Zoom event is not just for women in radio, it's for women who are connected to radio in any way. So if you know somebody and they're not on this call, just shoot them a text or invite them to join us because we'd love for them to be with us today as well. Well, our theme for today is celebrate. Our verse is Philippians 4, 4, and it says, be cheerful, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let your joy overflow and let gentleness be seen in every relationship for our Lord is ever near. Um, what a great verse for us to remember. Um, would you guys um, welcome with me Hannah Kerr. She's our special guest today. She's a beautiful singer songwriter who desire, um, she just is loves people and she makes sure that they know they are loved. She's currently on tour with Matthew West. She has a song right now called Grave, which you heard um, if you were a part of this at the beginning. So Hannah is going to um, open us in prayer. Hi, Hannah. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. I'm so excited to be here. Um, let's pray. Lord, we come to you today and we just say thank you. We thank you for each one of these women um, who does ministry, um, shares the gospel with people that need to know about you. And we praise you for the opportunity to be together, to encourage one another. Lord, I pray for Parks and Weeze and Tracy and Michelle and Beth and Sarah as we all share. Um, Holy Spirit, would you do what only you can do? Would you allow each woman that's listening, including us, to be impacted by what you have to say to us? Um, I pray against any nervousness or fear, or anxiety, just that, God, you would do an amazing work right now on this Zoom um, that you would do what only you can do. We just submit to you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this opportunity to gather. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Hannah. Hannah's actually going to come back. Um, a little later on and share with us um, some things that the Lord's laid on her heart. Um, but let us let us welcome um, our sponsor, um, which is Convoy of Hope, Angela Hudson. Um, we would not be able to do what we do without our friends at Convoy of Hope. And I'm so excited, Angela, because I'm in the big town of Springfield, Missouri, and I'm going to get to go see your team here and visit with them today. So um, thank you guys for being a part of our Women in Radio webinars. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for having um, us today and 
man, I wish I was in Springfield so I could meet you finally uh, face to face, but that will happen. But I just wanted to say really quickly, I know that many of you have partnered with us um, with Convoy of Hope during times of disaster. And even some of you have partnered with us with Empowering Women. And we are so thankful for that. I mean, I can't tell you the difference that you're making in lives of people all around the world. It's absolutely incredible. But over the next few webinars, we're going to be with you all and we're going to be there at Momentum. I will personally be there. I can't wait. I'm super excited. It's actually going to be my first Momentum conference and I'm thrilled to be with you all. And we're going to be sharing more um, with you about about how moms are breaking the cycle of poverty. And this is all happening through our women's empowerment program. It's important for us to understand, you see in developing countries, women living in extreme poverty make less than $1.90 a day. I mean, I personally can't even imagine that. Um, you know, we've just been so blessed, I feel like here in the United States, but this happens to so many women all around the world that are living in these extreme conditions. And they have no safety nets whatsoever. And not only that, um, you know, some of them have to even choose some days of which child they're going to feed. So imagine that as a mom having to make those really tough decisions. And their only way out is a hand up. And it's a hand up from some, someone who actually takes the time and starts to believing in them and believing in their gifts and what they have to offer. So Convoy is giving these women the tools to live these independent lives, and we do that through jobs, training, and education. And women like Marita, who is in Ethiopia, you see Marita, her husband actually abandoned her and her four children, and they were forced to live on the streets. And it's crazy to think that there were nights at night when she was out on the street, she would literally strap her daughters to her legs so that no one would take them or rape them. I can't even imagine just um, as a mother myself, just really how that would feel on a day-to-day -day basis every night, knowing that that's what you had to do to protect your children. But the good news is, is since her graduating from our Women's Empowerment Program, she is now thriving in her new business, Making in Jura. And here's the crazy thing. We helped her go from making a dollar per day to over 10 in her new business. Her future is now secure. She's thriving. She's feeding her family now that she owns her own restaurant. And more importantly, she knows that God sees her. This is all a result from someone just giving her a chance and having the opportunity to participate and graduate from our Women's Empowerment Program. So we look forward to meeting you all at Momentum and discovering how we can come together and empower more women than ever before. So thank you guys so much for having us a part of this. Well, I'm not sure what's going on with my mute button, but all of a sudden it uh, had some problems. But we are so thankful for Angela. She is in the big town of Houston this week at a conference. So we appreciate her making time for us. Well, our first one in radio is often mistaken for Wonder Woman. And if you know her, you know why. We Stockton um, is always looking for a prayer request. Um, she is such a prayer warrior and um, I adore her dearly because of the prayers that she's called me with. She works evenings on WBGL in Champaign and loves Loves, loves her husband, John, and their son, Hunter. And we love that she is here today with us. Hello, Weeze. Well, hello. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Michelle. I'm so glad to be with you. And speaking of celebrating, celebrating uh, my husband and I, John, celebrated 31 years of marriage yesterday, celebrating Wonder Woman. I love all things Wonder Woman. And the song Warrior by Hannah Kerr that I loved and was instrumental to me years ago. So glad to be with you guys today. Um, first, I wanted to say I'm in radio because one song, one song changed my life. I'm that person. 1986, as a teenager, did not believe in God, heard a song by Amy Grant on the radio. And I thought, this is so cool. Why am I crying? I went to a concert and that concert is when God revealed himself to me. So music means so much to me because God used it to reach me. And I've been in radio for 25 years now. I did some time in classic rock, which was fun, and some time in country radio. But my passion, my true passion, is Christian radio. So I'm so glad to be here. As we were talking about Celebrate, I wanted to take you to a moment with me. Now, the moment is about the years, about 2013. 
I'm really sick. I'm in a hospital. They're trying to do this test to determine what's going on. Why has Wee's been almost bedridden? And um, this test goes and things are going as they're supposed to until this moment happens. And I feel like somebody is pulling my legs and my arms away from my body, pushing into my chest. I can't breathe. I'm full of panic, but I hear this voice. I hear God saying to my heart, trust me, trust me. And I said, I'm scared. And the room started going black. And I remember seeing this team of doctors and nurses running with this horrified look as I'm on this tilt table and I'm tilted upward and I'm starting to, to go black. And right before I did, I just saw one nurse just look at me and this doctor just crying. And I said, dear God, help me now. Help me now. Like that, everything was black and I was out. I came to, there was a crash cart there that they didn't need to use, thankfully. But I'm like, what just happened to me? I don't feel good. And, and I have all these doctors telling me, hey, Wheeze, you're really sick. You cannot stand anymore. You could have a stroke. You cannot drive yourself anywhere anymore. How have you been even getting around? I'm like, well, it's been difficult because I'd been sick at this point with a year for a year. That was a moment that I knew I was hearing from God so clearly to trust him, to trust him through this. I'm like, okay, he got me through that moment. It led me on three years of this journey. But I'm happy to tell you, even after doctor said, you're never going to get better. We, with the conditions you have, you're going to end up in a wheelchair. You got to quit your job. I didn't. And you know what? I'm walking and healing. So, you know, the Wonder Woman glasses need to come on because I am walking and healing. God radically healed me about three years ago after so many doctors, so many teams, and I went anywhere and everywhere for prayer. So when Michelle was talking about how I love to pray, you better believe it. I love to pray because I love to see what God's going to do. I saw what he did. I saw what happened with prayer. And so I'm like, Lord, I want to pray for anybody anywhere. I will pray on the air. I will pray if he tells me in the grocery store. And I, my favorite thing to do is to be at concerts and say, come to the booth. I want to pray for you. I don't know what God's going to do, but I want to ask. I want to ask on your behalf. So I am celebrating yes to healing. So friends, I'm so glad to be with you today and just celebrate my Jesus and what he did. And I'm serious. If any of you need prayer, email me just because I'd love to be praying with you and see what God is going to do. Now, you may be thinking, we, it's a little much with the Wonder Woman. But before I, I leave you today, I just want to tell you, that was the image that I had throughout that five years of battling illness. I'm like, Lord, I can't even get out of bed, but I'm going to pray for this person, pray. And I felt like the Lord said to me, you see yourself as weak, but I see you as Wonder Woman in the kingdom. So that has very significant meaning. Thanks so much for letting me share that story of God's goodness. And I'm so thankful for music that encouraged me, like Hannah Kerr's song, Warrior. We had met at that time and so many other amazing worship songs. I love to do what we get to do. So thanks so much for having me. What a great day. You know, we, um, when I see God's miracles, you're definitely at the top of that list because I saw you when you were so, um, so weak and it's amazing to see, um, full restoration with you. And I love how you give the Lord all the credit. And so what an encouragement to us. Thank you, Weez, um, for your story and for your testimony of God's, um, goodness in your life. So we're going to, um, head up to shine FM in Baltimore, uh, where we have a lady whose mission is to creatively communicate the gospel at all times. Um, she not only, um, is an amazing talent on the air. She's a singer, a podcaster, um, and she juggles all that with being on the mornings at shine FM. Welcome Tracy. Thank you so much, Michelle. I am so thrilled to be here. And um, gosh, I'm I'm still trembling from hearing Weez's testimony 
um, just wanting to jump and shout over here. Thank you so much for sharing that, Weez. It's it's great to be with all of you. And I love your theme from Philippians 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I love that verse because of the context in which it was written. The Apostle Paul writing these words from a Roman prison chained to a Praetorian guard. And there's a message in there for us, um, radio girls. <laughs> you know, we sometimes think we've got to have it all together before we have something to offer our listeners. I, I wonder how many of, of us battle with that when you feel like I don't have it all together. I'm struggling emotionally, um, physically, I've got stuff going on and I'm gonna get on the air and turn on this microphone and talk to people that, that Jesus loves. He's entrusted me to breathe life and hope and encouragement into them when I feel like I don't have anything to offer. Well, I love this verse. It's kind of like an anchor for me because it, Paul can have joy in the midst of of his circumstances because of the Lord, then, then so can we. And it, it just goes to show you, God is always meeting us in the middle of our mess. Paul was in a mess and, and he could find hope and joy in the Lord right there in the middle of that Roman prison. That's been kind of my story. <laughs> I, I uh, am a girl that grew up in a home that was not uh, a Christian home. And I made a lot of mistakes in my life, a lot of messes that I got myself into, but I came to faith in Jesus through an organization called Young Life. And once I came to faith, like 13 or 14 years old, he never left me. He was always holding on to me, even though I was kind of going around doing my own thing and making one mess after another, God kept holding on to me and drawing me back to himself. And I love that I get to now tell other people about his faithfulness and that the stuff that that came before you, the stuff in your past. You don't have to be ashamed of it. You can bring your mess right to God and he will, he will cover you. He will love you. He will, he will lift you up. A few years before I started in radio, I've been at uh, WRBS 95 One Shine FM for almost 20 years. And it has been my joy to be at this station, um, sharing hope and encouragement on the air every day. I love, love, love what I get to do. A few years before I started at the radio station, I had just gotten the keys to my new apartment. And it was the top floor of an old Victorian house. And the stairwell was this massive stairwell going all the way up to the third floor. And my landlords were Frank and Julie Lee an elderly couple from Taiwan, I thought they are so blessed to have me as their tenant because the person that rented the apartment before me was actually a bunch of college students and they kind of trashed the place. So they gave me the keys. They said I could do whatever I wanted. I'm like, I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to put in new carpet. I'm going to paint. They're going to be so happy that they rented to me right? Tenant of their dreams. So the first day I get my keys and I am going up that stairwell with all these supplies, cleaning supplies, painting supplies. I've got, you know, some paint brushes. I've got a paint can in this box. Well, I tripped going up the stairs. I trip a lot. I'm kind of clumsy. And I heard that sound, that unmistakable sound that nobody wants to hear when you're carrying a paint can. The paint can flew out of the box. It hit the stairwell and that sound it popped open, red paint everywhere in the stairwell, on the carpet, on the walls. It looked like someone had been assassinated in the stairwell of my new apartment. I was horrified. And just as I was about to burst into tears, my precious landlord, Julie, comes out of her second floor door and sees me standing there about ready to lose it. And before a tear could fall on my face, she says, oh, no, 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 it's okay. Don't worry, it's all right. You got Picasso here. I'll just add a little yellow, a little green, a little blue. It'll be beautiful. I gotta tell you, that to me was the perfect example of how Jesus has been in my life. I make a mess and he does something beautiful with it over and over and over again. And so I just wanna encourage you that he is faithful and good. And just when you think it's too messy, the struggle is real, you've got nothing to offer your listeners, you bring that mess to them. They need to know that there are other people that get it, that other people struggle, that other people make a mess and they know how to hold on to Jesus and make it through. So maybe, maybe us messy people have something to offer after all, because of, of his faithfulness and his goodness. Thanks so much for having me. Back to you, Michelle. 
Um, what a great word. Thank you, Tracy. I wrote it down. I make a mess and he does something beautiful with it. What a great um, thing for us to always remember. Um, I know I've got my hair flowing. It looks like I've got somebody like fanning me, but it's actually the air conditioner in a hotel room. So there's nobody fanning me, unfortunately. But no, anyway, thank you so much, Tracy. Um, we appreciate those words. We are now going to um, invite Park Stamper to join us. In 1997, she moved from her job in telecommunications to an on-air shift position at 104.7 Efficient in Atlanta. And for the last 21 years, She's been such an inspiration to the listeners and broadcasters. Um, she's authentic and she loves Jesus. Um, and actually today we get to celebrate her retirement. So hello, Parks. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I am just honored to be here, actually. And I just wanted to, to kind of build a little bit on what Tracy was just saying, because what I'm celebrating today is I'm celebrating being ourselves, really us, and through our weaknesses. Nobody likes to talk about our weaknesses, right? But my journey is all about uh, Jesus loves me. When I am weak, he is strong. And I wouldn't even have made it into radio without God. Let me give you just a little bit of background about me. I grew up in a little tiny town that had 2,500 people in it called Saltville, Virginia. And in case you can't tell, I got a little bit of an Appalachian Southern accent <laughs> going on here. <laughs> so fast forward, I uh, listened to radio top 40 stations when I was growing up and I just loved that. And I would listen overnights. I remember listening to W.O., W.O., Fort Wayne. And there was a lady on overnights. And I'm like, I want to do what she is doing. Oh, my goodness. And I just felt like I knew her. And I actually, without my mom and dad knowing, called her one night as she was leaving to tell her how much I liked her. Long distance, when long distance actually cost money. Um, didn't get in trouble for that, thankfully. But fast forward a few years later, and I'm in college, and I am a theater major at University of Tennessee in Knoxville, go Vols. And they made fun of my accent. Okay, you know it's bad if you're in Knoxville, <laughs> Tennessee, and they're making fun of your accent. So that destroyed, that destroyed me. It destroyed my confidence. I was like, there's no way I can do anything with my voice. Um, theater major, uh, maybe I can mime. I don't know, you know, uh, and it, it was, it was kind of traumatic. Um, so I didn't even really pursue anything like that because it's always in the back of my mind. Oh, you kind of have a, a mountain or southern accent going on there. Fast forward to me moving to Atlanta. And um, I did a lot of different jobs there, but I ended up in telecommunications and I was a platform trainer. So it was kind of like theater. I was standing up telling people, you know, how, what I knew about cellular communications and how to, you know, do customer service and stuff like that. And I listened to a radio station, a small radio station, 91.5, Victory 91.5 out of Cumming, Georgia. And there was a lady on the air named Margaret Cheely. And I told my husband one day we were riding in the car and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to sound like her. I want to do this and I want to sound like her. So um, a friend of mine said, if you're really serious about trying to get into radio, you need to take a, a broadcast course. So I took one with, at that time, it was the Connecticut School of Broadcasting and ended up getting hired by 91.5 before I finished the class and actually got to work with Margaret Cheely. And that was uh, just a thrill. But then what I did is I spent the next 20 or so years trying to be Margaret Sheely, <laughs> trying to sound like Margaret Sheely. And, you know, there are not enough voice and diction classes in the entire world to get rid of this mountain Southern accent. Go back home, it's back and just forget it. It's not going anywhere. So um, throughout the years, I've realized a couple of things. One, I'm lazy. And it's just too much work to try to be somebody you're not, try to be somebody else. And two, well, I have a testimony. I ended up on a top 
five rated station in market number seven with this accent. Okay, God exists. If you don't believe that, <laughs> that should tell you God exists. And number three, God has a sense of humor. And um, there is just absolutely nothing that he can't do. And if he could take me and put me with this um, accent on the air and have me thrive through him, there's nothing that you can't do through him. And whatever your weakness is, whatever it is that you're struggling with, that's always in the back of your mind, like Tracy was talking about, you know, not having it all together. What, you know what? He can use that. He absolutely can use that. And he did it in my life. And um, I hope that my story um, encourages you. One of the nicest compliments that I've gotten over the years that I've been on the fish, and I've also uh, for 15 years, and I'm still voice tracking a station in East Tennessee where they kind of are used to my accent. Uh, it's WCQR 88.3. But somebody called me one day and told me I sounded like Dolly Parton. And I was like, hey, I claim that. I take that. And um, one of the things that I got a lot is, well, Parks, you're just like on the radio. You're the same as you are in person. And my boss even said that I sounded like Atlanta. So that was... Uh, that meant so much. And to know that never, ever in my wildest dreams did I think I would be able to do this, just uh, God can do anything. And that's my testimony. And I'll go ahead and send it back to you, Michelle. Um, hopefully you got some encouragement from that. Oh, thank you, Parks. Um, Beth was telling me something about accommodation that you had received from the city of Atlanta. Oh my goodness, this was the coolest thing. Yeah, a lot of them at the fish got together and uh, went to the um, state Senate and I got a commendation from the state Senate and I got a commendation from the governor. Uh, I was not expecting that, but um, on my last day at work, they presented those with me, um, to me and uh, also presented me with a, you're retiring to Florida survival pack that included like Depends and denture cream and some things like that. <laughs> <laughs> ugly, ugly t-shirts, ugly <laughs> big sunglasses. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you for um, your words of wisdom and for the incredible testimony of what it looks like for us um, down the road as far as retirement and the hope that we have in that someday. Um, <laughs> it but, can happen. Man, it really can happen. Thank you for it having can. me. And, and 21 years of faithfulness, man, that is, that's amazing. That means you were there from the start, right? I was. Um, the station came on the air in September of 2000, and I started in November of 2000. So nice, yeah. nice. Well, thanks for being a part of our day today, Parks. Uh, we well, appreciate you. it. Um, and now it's a pleasure for us to welcome the beautiful and talented Hannah Kerr back with her words of celebration. I'm just going to turn it over to you, Hannah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I am so honored to be here. I'm so excited. Um, I love Philippians 4 because to me, it speaks about being steady, um, even in seasons of unsteadiness. And I think as I look back at my life, I often thought of, you know, while I was going through seasons, I would think, oh, this is a good season or this is a bad season. But I think the older I get and the more I look back at my life, I see that every season that we walk through has both good and bad. They have both triumphs and tragedies, and that is what life is. And I love how in Philippians 4, we're commanded to rejoice in every season. It's not just a suggestion that Paul's making, it's a commandment that he is giving us to rejoice. And so today to kind of talk about what it looks like to rejoice in all seasons, I want to share three different seasons that I've walked through recently um, that were mostly good and causes for celebration and how I learned to um, celebrate even in the midst of times that were good and hard at the same time. So first, I want to talk about my wedding. Um, for those of you that don't know, I got married right at the beginning of the pandemic two years ago. Um, I think it was three days before our wedding that we found out that there was a stay-at-home order in Nashville. And so 
we could not have a wedding like we planned. We had been together for five years. We had been engaged for a year and we had planned every detail of this perfect wedding. And it became clear that it was not going to happen the way that we thought it would anyway. And so in that moment, we had a choice. We could either give in to the disappointment and the grief of this day that we had planned for so long and how it wasn't going to be a reality or we could choose to celebrate and say that God had something planned for that day, even if it was different than our plans. Um, how can we celebrate even in the midst of a pandemic? And so my husband and I decided to still get married and we didn't have a wedding. And honestly, I can say two years from that day that I look back at that beautiful wedding day. And I do not think of the sadness that I felt of not having my friends there. I don't think of the sadness that I felt about my grandparents not being there. Those things were very real. And that was the reality of the day. But I look back and I think of the beauty that God made from such a difficult day where I thought I would be sad and grieving. I actually felt joy and I actually felt peace. And that is only because of God that I was able to celebrate in such a beautiful day. So that's one example. The second example is a few weeks ago, I signed a new record deal with Curve Word. And that is such a reason for celebration. Like I am so excited. And I know that this is the beginning of a new season. It's the beginning of a new chapter in my story. And I'm like, I'm just brimming to the, to the brim with excitement. I'm so excited. And even with something that's so easy to celebrate, my little pessimist mind is like, but it's scary going into a new season. Oh, but you didn't do everything you wanted um, with your old record label. What if you didn't, you know, hit the success that you thought you would? And there is still that, that sadness, that grief of leaving a season and walking into a new one, um, even though it's such a good thing to celebrate. And I really believe that as I look back, you know, I think two years from today, what am I going to think about this transition? And I really believe that I am going to be celebrating. I'm going to look back and see the joy that it is to start a new season and look back at the season that I'm leaving and knowing that that's something to celebrate as well. And so the third thing that I want to talk about is the thing that I'm most excited to share so on January 17th, 2022, my second niece, Layton Grace Kerr, was born. Um, she was born at 28 weeks and she was two and a half pounds. So I have a photo of her tiny foot just to show you guys how small she really was. I'm going to share that. So this just gives you a picture of how small Leighton Grace Kerr is and how um, when she was born, it was just absolutely so hard to wrap our heads around what was going on. And leading up to her birth, um, my sister-in-law Taylor went into labor at 24 weeks, just a few weeks before Christmas. And I remember getting that phone call and just being so fearful, just thinking, I don't know how this is going to work. Like we didn't plan for this. When you hear the news that you're going to have a baby in your family, it's just joy and you don't plan for this, this hardship that's about to come. And um, I just remember praying and asking God, you know, to protect Leighton and to help her survive because the age of viability for a baby, for those of you who don't know, is 26 weeks. So Leighton was still two weeks away from having a good chance at survival. And so we just kept praying two more weeks, God, two more weeks, keep her in there for two weeks. And our specific prayer was that God would stop Taylor's labor. And he did. He stopped it even when medicine was not stopping it, when the doctors had no idea how to, how to stop this labor from happening and how to keep Leighton in there. Um, God stopped her labor, not one time, but six times. Over the next five and a half weeks, God stopped Taylor's labor six times and didn't just give us the two weeks that we were praying for. He gave us almost six weeks of Leighton being able to grow and mature inside of Taylor. And another thing that we were praying for during this time is for Leighton to have strong lungs because the doctor kept saying, you know, this is the laundry list of things that can be wrong with Leighton. And we were just praying against all of those things. And the main thing was that um, she needed to have developed lungs to get enough oxygen. And so we were just praying and we were just asking God, 
please God, develop her lungs. Please help Leighton to breathe on her own. And would you believe it that when Leighton was born, not only did she breathe on her own, but she actually cried the moment that she was born. The doctors could not believe their ears. <laughs> they were like, this baby at 28 weeks is crying out. And I fully believe because of the way that God worked miracles, because of the way that I saw him be faithful, I believe that Leighton was rejoicing, that she was crying out to the Lord with this little voice that he had given her. It was just so amazing. I remember just being like, there's no doubt in my mind that the Lord is at work in this little girl's life. And obviously she had to be in the NICU. She was in the NICU for 53 long days. And that in and of itself is a thing to grieve. It was very hard. Um, there was a lot of times where the reality of losing her was very real. Um, she had blood transfusions and all of these complications and it was very difficult. But last Friday, they got the news that she was able to come home from the hospital. And so I wanna show you a picture of Leighton the day that she got to come home. Um, she is perfect. She's perfect. She breathes, she cries, she smiles. She is perfect. And I truly believe that when we look back at this crazy journey with her birth and just everything surrounding her circumstances of entering the world, I don't think we're going to remember the 53 days in the NICU. I don't think we're going to say that God failed us. I don't think that we're going to say this was too hard for us to get through. I think we're just going to rejoice that Leighton is alive and well and that God sustained her. Um, I got to meet her on Monday. And so I want to show you one more photo of me and my husband, Jason, getting to hold Leighton for the first time. She's so tiny. It's so hard to tell from this photo, but she is so tiny. And we just got to look into her little face and see the tangible reminder of her, of God's goodness and of the fact that he can be trusted in all seasons, even when it's hard to celebrate. And so kind of in preparing for this, I was asking God, you know, why, why are we celebrating? Why is it important to celebrate? And what would we have done if this story had turned out differently? What if we had lost Leighton? What do we say to people who are grieving their parents dying? What do we say when we go through seasons of depression and how do we rejoice even in those seasons? And I believe that the reality is, is that our circumstances are not always worth celebrating. Like we go through hard things and we do not need to celebrate those things, but we serve a God who is so worth celebrating no matter what. And so I pray that in seasons that I go through and that seasons that we all go through in ministry and sharing the gospel and whatever with our family, that we would be able to fix our eyes on the Lord and say that he is worthy of celebration. I also was asking God, so what, God, why are we celebrating? So what, what's the purpose of this? And I felt like the Holy Spirit just reminded me that what we do on earth is practice for eternity. And it reminds me of the Lord's prayer. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so as we celebrate here on earth in these seasons that are good and bad, and both at the same time and everything in between, we are practicing for eternity and saying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So thank you guys so much for allowing me to share a little bit of my story, to share our family's little miracle and um, just the ways that we've seen God work. So I will toss it back to you, Michelle. Hannah, what an amazing story. Thank you so much. And those pictures are so precious. Um, and I love when you said like, practicing for eternity, right? That's what we're doing. And uh, man, thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on um, the new record deal and for giving us a little like insight on that. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I know that um, I can definitely speak on the behalf of my team. We all adore Hannah. Um, her Christmas project is one of our favorites of all time. Um, if you ladies haven't heard it, um, it's not too soon to start playing Christmas, right? I mean, <laughs> 
But anyway, um, we'd love to invite all of our special guests to join us now. Um, we're going to have some Q&A. We're going to, um, Beth McCall is going to join us as well. Um, she's going to be asking some fun questions of our special guest um, and see if you guys watching can figure out um, the answer to our, our questions. Um, so anyway, uh, Beth, I'm going to turn it over to you. You are, isn't Michelle amazing? Thank you for leading us yes. so well, Michelle, and for making sure we get time like this. Thank you, thank you. Where are you? What hotel room are you? Did you say you're in Colorado? I am in Springfield, Missouri. So Missouri, yes. we like the wind in your hair. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say hello to some of the people that are in the chat. I didn't get a chance to connect with everybody, but everybody wave hi to Kelly Blackwell at the Promise in Gaylord, Michigan. Guys, give a big hello to Tracy's husband, Gary is is hanging out watching his wife and supporting her is that isn't that look at that yeah we got to give hearts to gary isn't that fantastic uh summer shepherds checking in from uh hope 107.9 in albany oregon she's got a really great new night show say hi to michaela brown at shine fm say hi to heidi larson 103.7 the connection in maryland hello heidi uh, wbgl is representing very well we we have uh, evangelina we have amy Hey guys, uh, Denise Harper from uh, The Bridge is on and that's in Delaware. So uh, we wanna be praying for her husband. I saw on a Facebook post yesterday that uh, her husband is uh, needing some big prayers. So Weeze, you got it. I see Wonder Woman right there. I see all of the women actually, which is great because that's about to happen. Also uh, one more. Oh, Denise Pagano is Z88.3 in Orlando. That's, that's Weeze's uh, Thelma to her Louise. And Sean Marie, I saw you first thing. She was in the room right away. KCMM, the one in Montana. Sean Marie's a great air talent. So there you are. Yeah, Denise says, thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, prayers for Ken. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about these ladies, and they all come well swagged with things. Whoever answers correctly in the chat will win their bag of swag. So out of all of these ladies, who can read and write in Hebrew? First correct person in the chat is going to win the swag. Out of all of these amazing ladies, don't give them any clues. <laughs> and Denise Pagano, you got it. Yes, it's heck. How are you read and write in Hebrew? I have it in, in, since college, but I did take Hebrew for four years. And so that was very cool. But don't quiz me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we're going to have to come up with another question for you uh you actually win with the baby pictures those were just so precious she is the cutest baby i know i'm biased but she's the cutest baby i've ever seen like she's so perfect i wonder what kind of lullaby you might prepare for her oh i have already been singing to her like as soon as i held her i was just singing um weirdly the song that came to mind was how great is our god i was like mm. i just feel like in this moment that is the best thing for me to do so i just sang that to her my brother was like don't breathe on her <laughs> so i was just saying this way but <laughs> <laughs> okay out of all of these amazing women whose favorite food is uh indian food who absolutely can't go very long without having lamb tikka masala Look at this Summer Shepherd right away with the right answer. Tracy, how well do you know Summer Shepherd? It's like either that, either you two have eaten that dish before or you just look like that person. <laughs> Come off and talk to us about your food. I guess I just look like that person. <laughs> <laughs> I love Indian food. I absolutely love it. Um, and for just, just recently, we celebrated my sister's 50th birthday. My mom doesn't like to try anything new but I got my mom for my sister's birthday to try Indian food and she actually liked it. So yeah, I'm just winning people over one great tikka masala at a time. Who's next? <laughs> Who wants to join me? We've I got great we Indian do. restaurants in Maryland. Do you want to come? Forget the crab. We're going for Indian <laughs> food to Maryland, right? That's right. Absolutely. Now, That's what if they have crab tikka masala? I never thought about that, Beth. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about you because you're a worship leader also, and you've got this great podcast that people can't seem to get enough of. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? 
Thank you. That's so kind of you to say. My podcast is called Your Day Brighter, uh, and I absolutely love doing it. I get to uh, share stories, talk to people who are just doing beautiful things in the world. And so hopefully it's something that uh, lifts people up because there are beautiful things happening in the world all the time. Um, I am a, a, a worship leader um, and a, a singer songwriter. I've been, uh, I was on staff at my church for, for many, many years. Now I'm, um, I'm, I'm part of the clergy team and the worship team, but unpaid staff. And my husband is a pastor there. And um, so I've been in ministry a long time. Um, and radio just feels like, it feels like all those worlds kind of coming together I mean, it's kind of like a little bit of heaven, you know, you love music, the music is what lifts you up. And I, you know, I'm in the the, the studio with my friend, Mike, and I'm just singing and worshiping along with people wherever they are listening to the station. So um, yeah, I really love it. I feel like it's just this sweet, sweet little spot of life that God has me in. And I'm so grateful. Yeah. Right seat, right bus. Isn't she just the best personality? It's so nice to get to know you a little better. Thank during you. This time. I'm so thrilled to meet all of you. <laughs> Actually, let's hop over to our, our fabulous sponsor, Convoy of Hope, because Angela, you know, what would we do without you on the front lines? First of all, supporting us. I mean, women don't always get as much support, I don't think, as, as we need. And this is like priority for you. Yes, I mean, it is true. But man, I'll tell you what, you know, getting to actually, I mean, I'm just dying to get into our countries and see some of our women because, you know, we haven't been able to do that. But that doesn't mean the work is is being minimalized whatsoever. But I'll tell you what, I mean, one of the greatest things of just with the Women's Empowerment Program is when you meet one of these ladies and, you know, being a mom and, and so often um, I have two daughters and I've been, we've been really, really blessed. You know, our family's just been blessed abundantly. But these women, they don't ever have the opportunity. They're just fighting every single day to just meet the needs that their kids need. And when you see a mom that we are able to completely transform their life. And I had one lady, she was like, I'm now able to buy something every once in a while that my child just wants. So put that into perspective for a moment. I mean, that's life changing. Even when I say it, it gives me goosebumps. And just to find their value and worth. And, you know, we um, we all, I mean, I, I'm going to speak for you, but I know myself, I find value and worth in what I do, how I can provide for my family, how I can nurture my children. And through just being able to change that, to change that income slightly and give them the training that they need, their value and their worth, how they then see themselves, it changes dramatically. And when you get to witness that, I mean, it's life-changing. It really is. So we can't thank you enough just for how you partnered with us and um, helping us do that. And I will tell you also, um, we right now have a warehouse in Ukraine, um, just outside of Ukraine and well, actually in Poland. And so through that, we are supporting just the humanitarian disaster that's happening over there, being able to get food. We're getting food into, um, in the area of Kiev, and we are actually able to provide food to churches right now. They're feeding people because of just people's support with everything that we're doing and and so along with that, again, you know, moms that have had to leave everything and get their children, um, it's amazing, again, to be able to meet those needs and to help them mm. out. So we are mm. just, we are blessed by people like you because we can't do what we do without it. So, I mean, I, it's hard to express in words and over a, uh, a webinar and a Zoom, but I'm telling you right now from the bottom of my heart, we say thank you because mm. um, you're changing lives every single day, people you may never know but the impact is great. Well, thank you for all your hard work for the women. That's a great update and great to know that you're uh, in Ukraine as well. Now, one of these women in this group happens to be a certified court reporter. I mean, you want to hear some stories. I bet whoever's a court reporter probably has the best. And look at this right away, Denise Harper guests. Park Stamper, who is lounging in Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> Hi, Parks. Hey there. Yep. I, uh, it started out as a joke because I'm almost 60 and in my entire life, I've never been called for jury duty and I've always wanted to be on a jury so bad. And my husband has been called multiple times. Everybody I've worked with getting called, getting called, getting called. 
And so I actually had a joke on the air, like, what's wrong with me? Why won't anybody call me for jury duty? And I still hadn't gotten called. So um, just my curiosity about the whole court process and everything. And, you know, thinking about life after radio and stuff, I thought, well, this is kind of cool. Let me check into that. And so I took a class and, and got certified. It's pretty awesome. It's very awesome. And we miss you very much at, at well, Fish. Miss in you the guys back. too. And it's so good to see you in Florida. And uh, Parks has an Airbnb too, if anybody's in, in the mood to go to, <laughs> to Florida or Tennessee. She is well housed, <laughs> that woman. She very much is. And uh, we have uh, one more to go. And then after we get the next answer, we're going to end with everybody talking about their favorite food before we all go off and uh, try and find some kind of lunch, depending on our time zone. So uh, there's a woman on this panel who uh, is a lunch lady turned certified life coach. And Sean Marie got it first, although everybody else seems to know about Wonder Woman. <laughs> but the swag is going to go to Sean Marie. Wonder Woman, Michelle, I feel like we should have that theme just rolling through all the women in radio events from now on. I agree. I agree. I think we need to have that every time. <laughs> yes, I know. It's really impressive. I, I, <laughs> I was lunch lady. I know everybody's like thinking they're jealous. I mean, it was actually it was the best job. I did that 30 years ago. Loved it. And I did. I got certified as a Christian life coach about two years ago, three years ago. I went through schooling and um, I thought, why not? And it's been great when uh, people come up for prayer to throw in the life coaching uh, skills that I've learned. So, but the lunch lady is, is really, people are so impressed. I, I know it's the first thing on my resumes. So, you know, man, we use the lunch lady. I was fine. Let me tell you. The kids all wanted to play Foursquare with me. <laughs> Do you have any clients that you life coach? Well, I've been so busy with this that I don't, what I've done is just found a way to do it with bartering sometimes. You can do that, but I haven't had time with, I love doing so much on my show and radio and I oversee Chicagoland for WBGL because I live here in Chicagoland. And so I'm, I'm so busy that I haven't been able, but I'm glad I got the certification because it really helps you with on air. And Tracy, when you mentioned worship leading, I, I've led worship for 30 something years and it, the switch when you go on the air, God told me when I first 25 years ago, hey, you're leading worship. You're leading worship. It, it, it's like changed everything. So that was cool. Mm, thanks, Weez. You're right. It does. Those are great skills to have for on air for sure because it helps you learn about the other person and pull out what they need. And our listeners learn so much from that. So we're going to go around the room and hit all the ladies up and find out what their favorite lunch in the whole wide world is before they go grab their swag bags and send it your way because you know who you are. And I know who you are that just won. And it sure is fun to find out all of these great stories about these wonderful ladies. We're going to start with Hannah. Hannah Kerr, your favorite lunch in the whole world. If you could have anything for lunch today, what would that be? Mexican food, but specifically chips and queso. I would eat that every single day if I could. <laughs> I shouldn't, but I want to. <laughs> yeah, you know, we talked about this. Does anybody get the John Acuff emails? Uh, he said that he's in, in Mexico this week with his kids on spring break. And instead of the hotel, you know, turning down the sheet and putting a mint on his pillow, he hopes they put a couple of chips and a little thing of queso. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> What did you think of that? Michelle Youngman, your favorite lunch in the whole wide world is? Um, there is a restaurant in uh, Nashville called Green Hills Grill. And um, they closed down for a couple of years, but they've opened back up and they have the most amazing tortilla soup and the best spinach artichoke choke dip. My husband hated it when I was pregnant because that's all I craved and we were not living in Nashville. But if you're in Nashville, Green Hills Grill is um, an amazing restaurant. So that's what that's that would be what I crave right now. Thanks. Mm. Thanks mm. <laughs> that sounds like perfect food. We're going to take it down to the square below you. Angela, what's your most perfect lunch? What would you have if you could have anything today? Oh man, I have to be with Hannah on Mexican food, but I have to go with tacos. I could eat I mean, all kinds, like it doesn't matter, you know, soft, hard shell, 
steak, street tacos. I don't care. Uh, but that would probably be it for me. I could eat them every day. So again, I try to stay away from it as much as possible, but it's funny because like we're in Houston and everybody wants to go to like all these different Mexican restaurants. So, you know, I'll get my, hopefully my dreams of maybe having tacos for the next few days fulfilled. So. <laughs> hey, ladies on the chat, would you pop in your favorite lunch as well? Michelle, this is good research for our women in radio events. So uh, if you're in the chat, why don't you tell us what you would love to have for lunch as well? What do you say, Michelle? Isn't it good research? <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys, thank you so much for being a part of our time together. What a blessing. We hope that everybody walks away again, just feeling renewed and regenerated um, for our day together. And um, Beth, thank you for all your hard work in pulling this all together. Ladies, thank you so much for sharing. We look forward to seeing your beautiful faces and momentum um, in June. And then our next Women in Radio uh, Zoom event is going to be later on in June. So we look forward to seeing you guys there. Blessings to everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.